everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. It's been some time since I've done an episode in my character profile series so I figured it was time to get another one out there. I've got another one set to come out here in the next few days that I think you all are going to like but in this video we're going to do an in-depth analysis of the Daughter of the Night herself, Lanfear. Before we get into the video I wanted to point out something really cool I discovered the other day that you guys might want to check out. There's a really cool interview with the two readers or the two narrators for the Wheel of Time audiobooks. Michael Kramer and uh, Kate Redding. They talk about the series and the experience of reading such a long and complex series with so many characters. You can get the audio for that interview for free on Audible. There's no charge at all and it's about a 12 minute clip that I found pretty interesting. If you don't already have an audible.com account, audible.com is a partner here with me on this channel and they are offering a free full length audiobook to my viewers. It's super simple to take advantage. Just go to www.audible.com forward slash Nablus, it's right here, and sign up for a free trial. You'll get a free audiobook of your choice, and you can also download that clip of Michael Kramer and Kate Redding I was just talking about. You don't need to keep the subscription uh, to keep your book, but I do highly recommend it as it's pretty cheap. It's about 15 bucks a month, and you'll get a new book every month. It's a great way to listen to the Wheel of Time books, as you can get a new one each month, and that's usually how long it takes to get through one anyway. The best news is, is that by signing up for a free trial, you're supporting my channel's growth, and I would appreciate it. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. We're going to start by throwing up a spoiler warning. This video will carry a spoiler rating of red, meaning that I'm basically going to talk about stuff all the way up through the final book. And if you haven't read those books yet, I'll probably end up spoiling some stuff for you. And... Ain't nobody got time for that! So as with the last time I did a character analysis, I have 10 sections that we're going to take a look at as we examine the different aspects of Lanfear's character. The sections are as follows. History before the story actions during the story, appearance, personality, special abilities, notable possessions, relationships, greatest moments, what happens after the story, and overall impact and role in the story. Then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you my opinion of her overall arc and the story and whether she was executed well as a character. So let's dive into my character analysis of Lanfear. Lanfear was born Mirren Arenale roughly 400 years prior to the breaking of the world in the Age of Legends. As she was learning to channel the One Power in her youth, her and Luz Theron Telamon were lovers for some time. After a time, Luz Theron broke it off because as he rose in prestige and power among the Hall of Servants, which is the Aes Sedai at the time, she seemingly loved the prestige of being with him and the potential power that she might achieve through that relationship more than she cared for him. She was burned greatly by Luz Theron breaking off the relationship and harbored great resentments towards Ileana Theron Morell, who was later married to Luz Theron Telamon. For her career as an Aes Sedai, Mirren served as a researcher at the Kolum Dam, a university in the city of Vesaint. The university was considered beautiful and had silver and blue domes. The most notable feature of the Kolum Dam, however, was the Sharon, a massive white sphere that floated above the university. This university was the leading institution for development and research in the Age of Legends, and this was a fairly prestigious role. Now, at this point, Mir and Arenale had not earned a third name, which were given to those that had distinguished themselves in service. This was surprising as an Aes Sedai of her strength in the One Power would typically have received a third name or earned it by this point. This is what potentially motivated her research. She was served at this time by the Daishan Aiel Charn and was said to be very kind to him. Her partner at the Kolum Don was Bitamon, and together they were researching a new source of power that they believed could bridge the gap between male and female channelers. Although many great things had been accomplished together, the fact that they did not weave the same power led many to believe that advances would stop if they could not learn how to work together better. Mirren and Bitamon found this source of power and attempted to drill a hole in the pattern to reach this power source. Unbeknownst to them, the source of this power was the Dark One's prison. The drilling of the bore and the Dark One's ability to now touch the pattern had immediate effects on the utopia that was the Age of Legend and caused what was called the Collapse. The Kolom Dawn itself was completely destroyed, although it appears Mirren escaped. Society itself began to decay in the Collapse as the Dark One's touch was felt all over. Having been burnt by Luz Theron and the Hall of Servants, Mirren Arenail was the first of the Aes Sedai to pledge her support to the Dark One, and she actually did it in the Hall of the Servants itself. She was the first of the Forsaken, and during the War of Power, she never actually had a military command, but tormented many through their dreams and attempted at many points to try to turn Luz Theron to the shadow. She was among the Forsaken that were sealed at the boar when Luz Theron and the Hundred Companions sealed the boar at the end of the War of Power. She then slept for 3,000 years until awakening at the beginning of the story. 
After she is awakened from her dreamless sleep as the Dark One's prison weakens, she begins to search for Rand by watching the effects of his Taviran nature on the world. She seeks him out using her knowledge of Taviran. During the events of the Great Hunt, she appears to Rand in the Portal Stone world as Selene, a common disguise she takes when dealing with Rand and the other Taviran boys. She helps give Rand advice on how to return them from the Portal world to our real world. She then stays with Rand, Loyal, and Huron as Selene, and attempts to coerce Rand to seek glory by recapturing the Horn of Valir. He rebuffs her and she disappears for a while. She then later poses as Elsa Grinwell in the tower and gives Nynaeve, Elaine, and Egwene information about the Black Aja sisters that had escaped, giving them clues that they should go to Tyr. She also appears to Egwene Alvir in the Heart of the Stone as an old woman named Sylvie and tells her about Kalindor in the World of Dreams. She was trying to get the girls to go to Tyr as part of Bilal's trap, knowing that if Rand chased them there, he would take Kalindor and have power, and she could convince him to take her back. This was all part of her plan. Later, after Rand had taken Kalindor in the Stone of Tyr, she appears to him before the Trolloc attack and shields him. She does give him some aid here as she doesn't want him dead at this point and believes that he will come to her despite him pushing away at every time she makes an advance. When Rand goes to the Aiel Waste, she poses as Kelly Shayogi, an ugly and overweight merchant traveling through the Waste. She travels with Asmodian as well, both of them seeking the Chodian Call. After Rand defeats Asmodian, she shields Asmodian so that he channeled just enough to teach Rand to channel, but not enough to openly aid him. She then teams up with Grendel, Samael, and Ravine to try and turn Rand to the Shadow, although they suspect her motives. She ends up scrapping her plans out of anger, however, as she learns that Rand had slept with Avienda, and she absolutely goes bonkers and loses her mind. She confronts Rand on the docks at Kyrian, injures Egwene, and almost kills Rand, and is only really stopped because Marine tackles her into the doorframe Terangrial that leads to the world of the Fins. The doorframe melts, and everybody believes Moraine and Lamphere are dead. However, rather than being dead, she was captured by the Aelfin and the Eelfin. They fed off her ability to channel until Moradin shows up in the world of Fins, and rather than rescuing her, he just kills her so that her soul can be resurrected by the Dark One. She is reborn as Sindane, which means last chance. She is then punished for betraying the Dark One to her own schemes, and Moradin holds her mind trap, meaning she is forced to obey him. She later participates in the battle at Shadar Logoth and deals with Olivia. Olivia, who is now stronger than her, and possessing Angrial and Tarangrial, forces Sindane to retreat as she's just flat out overwhelmed. Right before the last battle, she appears to Rand in the World of Dreams. She attempts to get him to save her from Moradin, but Rand sees through the ruse. She stops trying to convince him, and they have a brief conversation. He tries to get her to turn back to the light, and even opens his mind in the World of Dreams to her to show her that he doesn't actually truly care for her anymore. He then leaves and warns her to stay out of the last battle. During the last battle itself, she seemingly helps Perrin for much of it. She assists him with the dream spike at the Black Tower, she gives him advice on beating Slayer, and just as she seems to convince us that she's turned back to the light, she attempts to save the Dark One at the last minute, putting compulsion on Perrin and ordering him to kill Nynaeve and Moraine as they are linked to Rand. Perrin's deep love for Fayil allows him to break free of the compulsion, and he breaks her neck, killing her and ending her role in the story. Lanfair was considered by many to be the most beautiful woman to ever live. She was very tall for a woman, a little bit more than six feet tall. She has smooth, ivory pale skin with long black hair and deep black eyes. She has a very sensual sounding voice when she speaks and exudes a feeling of softness about her. In terms of dress, she is typically dressed in all white with some trappings of silver in her belt or shoes. She associates herself with the moon and white and silver are her main colors. <laughs> So Lanfear has an almost insatiable lust for power and the desire to be associated with those that have power. She believes that power and glory are the ultimate goal and should be the focus for everyone. This is ultimately what drives her schemes and even the reason why she originally went to the Dark One in the first place. Being as powerful as she was, Lanfear also though was very proud, arrogant, presumptuous, and very self-absorbed as most of the Chosen were, although she takes it to the extreme. She is extremely manipulative, and at her core, she's really loyal to just herself, even above the Dark One who she claims to follow. She would lie, cheat, steal, or kill just to protect herself and give herself a higher position. However, she didn't believe in hurting others or causing harm unless you get in the way of her ascent to power. In terms of her special abilities, she was one of the strongest, if not the strongest, female channelers of all time, stated to be as powerful as a woman could be unaided with the power. 
She sits at the top of the rankings before her rebirth as Sindane, and even after that, she was still very powerful. She considers herself to be a master of the world of dreams and refers to it as her domain. She excels at invading others' dreams and manipulation from the world of dreams. Although, she is likely outstripped in power in the world of dreams by Mogidian, and most certainly Ishamael, as he is an actual dreamer, and she just comes there in the flesh. Lanfear is extremely intelligent and knowledgeable about a great many things. She's very skilled with the power, but also as a master of disguise and subterfuge. She has many disguises and uses them frequently. She plays complex games and lays very complicated schemes, although her schemes do not tend to work much in the main story. Her only real notable possession was the bracelet on Grial that she used before being captured by the Finns. It's unknown where she acquired it, but it could have been from the Stone of Tear in the Great Holding there. This Angriol is a very powerful Angriol, almost on the level of a Saw Angriol. She later loses this to the Finns and they give it to Moraine Damadred as she returns from their world. It is this Angriol she uses when confronting Rand at the docks at Kyrian, and this is the reason why she appears to be so powerful to him. Lanfear's main relationship with any meaning in the story is Rand or Luz Theron. She believes that this time around she can convince Rand to desire her better than she had back in the Age of Legends when she lost Luz Theron to Ilyana. She never seems to understand that he doesn't desire power or covet glory like she does. It is this thought that she can turn him and win him over to her side that drives much of her plotline, and frankly a lot of the blundering on her part was based on the idea that she could succeed here. After it fails with Rand, she attempts to have similar relationships with both Matt and Perrin, but neither of them is as well flushed out with Rand in terms of their relationship. Her attempt with Perrin in A Memory of Light really backfires on her as well, as obviously he kills her. <laughs> Her relationships with the other Forsaken are a bit jaded as she sees herself as hiring a higher position uh, with them than she truly does. She believes herself to be better than the rest of them and above their scheming. They all see her as having an overinflated ego and thinking very highly of herself. This is especially true with Ishamayel, who thinks her thoughts of herself are actually kind of amusing. It's a one-sided rivalry as she covets the power the Dark One gives Ishamayel, but he doesn't really think much back about her or sees her as any type of competition. <laughs> So this is actually a tough one for Lanfear. She doesn't really have any great moments. Her most profound moment came when she confronted Rand by the docks at Kyrian. She almost killed him, but she was overconfident and didn't see Moraine sneaking up behind her and to tackle her into the doorframe. Her only other notable moment is when Perrin resists her compulsion and then he just snaps her neck and kills her. <laughs> Well, so this may sound like a really obvious answer because she's dead, but let's remember that this is the Wheel of Time. Souls in the Wheel of Time are reborn or are tied to the wheel. So what about Lanfear's soul? Well, there may actually be an answer to this. Uh, she was in the World of Dreams when Perrin snapped her neck at the end of A Memory of Light. And we know that if you die in the World of Dreams, you die forever. So it seems that Lanfear has gone bye-bye for good. Bye, Felicia. So Lanfear plays a very interesting role in the story. You could pretty much argue that without her, the forces of light might have lost. As she helps Rand learn to channel through Asmodian, she gives Rand important knowledge, and then later she assisted Perrin in removing the Dream Spike from the Black Tower and defeating Slayer. All of these things could have spelled disaster for the forces of light. She is one of the Forsaken that we get the most screen time with, although never from her point of view which leaves her intentions very mysterious. We are never quite sure if she might come back to the light, and it's left a mystery to us until the very end. So what do I think of the character of Lanfear? I think she was actually a fairly poor character that had a ton of potential. What do I mean by that? Well, I love the concept of humanizing your villains. And she was probably the most humanized, but really turned into more of a character as well, because really at the heart of who she is in the story, she's just a crazy obsessive woman for all her intelligence. I didn't like the almost sexist meme that she was just an emotional crazy woman overreacting because she didn't get the man she wanted. I don't want my villains to be driven by almost childish thinking like that. Now I understand that basically all of the Forsaken were somewhat one-dimensional in their selfishness and pettiness, that's why they went to the Shadow, but I feel like a woman with her skills and talents could have shown a bit more dimension, and actually might have been cool for her to come back to the Shadow, as it was said throughout the series that no one is so far gone that they cannot come back to the light. I would have liked to have seen her maybe sacrifice herself for Rand or one of the other characters and show some actual caring and love at some point to redeem herself. And if Robert Jordan wanted her to be a complete villain, I would have been fine with that. I just wish she had been more menacing than just going all ragey at finding out Rand had had sex. 
I would like to have seen her actually had some success in causing some harm to the forces of light and do something positive for the shadow in that case. I just felt very disappointed in her character. So that's it. My character analysis of the daughter of the night, Lanfear. What do you think? Do you think Lanfear was executed well? What would you have changed about her character, if anything? Please let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more content. Also, I wanted to thank everyone over on Patreon for your support. We're working towards a goal of building a new set for all of these videos, and your contributions are going to help me make that happen. Thank you to everyone who's a part of what we're doing over there. If you are liking my content and you want to see some more behind-the-scenes videos, my scripts, get access to my private Discord server, definitely check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Hey guys, thanks everybody, and until next time. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?